I suppose we should talk seriously about being famous and being female. There's never been a week with more news of bad stories of how inappropriate men can be. Did you ever encounter that where people either put you in awkward situations on the casting couch and threaten that your career would either end if you didn't do stuff or the other way around made offers uh, if you did? Okay, here, here it is. Never, after I got breaking glass, mm. never, ever, ever, nothing ever terrible um, like that. And probably because, you know, the people involved, the, 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 the people involved in Breaking Glass, it was a woman producer and a, a, her partner who was mas masculine, male. Mm. And the director, Brian Gibson, was just my best friend for years. Tony Visconti, who produced the record, also best friend, best mentor. And because I came in at that level, I suppose people didn't mess with me. And when we went to Hollywood, n not a problem. You know, I got mm. um, a contract with Paramount because of Breaking Glass. So everybody was very respectful. But before that time, before I cut through, I went um, years after, uh, years before fame, I'm, uh, before that I was a dancer in Beirut and I was a dancer in Japan. And when I finished doing that tour of duty, um, I was sent to possibly be one of the Benny Hill girls, okay? Wow. And I went for my uh, meet-up at his flat, and that was really pickled with um, a whole bunch of innuendo, innuendo from him saying, you know, well, well, this girl, these are one of my girls, and he kept showing me pictures of all his sexy girls that worked with him and how they looked after him. Mm. And eventually he said to me, well, I need to know, will you look after me too? And then wow. as I was trying to leave, he tried to snog me. Will you then, look after me as a euphemism for in the bedroom, for sex. I presume? Yeah, sexual favours. And I just thought, you dirty old man. And um, what, when he tried to kiss me, and it wasn't like lick a kiss on the cheek like we do in France. It was like, mm. you know, a gobby kiss. I just pushed him away. And, and uh, as I left his apartment, I knew I hadn't got the job. <laughs> and to be honest, I wouldn't have wanted it. I mean, because he didn't, you know, he didn't do anything more than that, but it was just the innuendo of it. Mm. And the fact that he, he tried to stick his tongue in my mouth and he was just old for me then in those days. I mean, I'm old now, I suppose. But it was just, it just disgusted me. And mm. I don't think he would have tried anymore because he wouldn't have given me the job. Do you know what I mean? And that's fine. I'm so glad I didn't get to be a Benny Hill girl. <laughs> Isn't that a world apart, though, for a 37-year-old man sat here talking to you? The notion that you could bring somebody in your home and bully them into sex to give them a gig just blows my mind. Unbelievable. Yeah, it blows my mind, too. It makes me very, very cross. And I feel, I feel for those women that are all coming out about Harvey Weinstein because, and, and I love it that all the Hollywood women, you mm. know, the top actresses, are also saying, you know, this, is, this cannot be born anymore. Mm. I mean, I think it, it, it should change, but who knows if it will change. It's because so many people want fame and adoration mm. that they will pay the price. I wonder as well, just thinking about what you said, where the line of rape or abuse or crossing the line happens. I mean, what he did was attempted assault, wasn't it, really? Let's face it, if not rape. Yeah. You've taken my what breath away with that. I, well, what you yeah. can do, I suppose, is tell someone. And I suppose at that point you couldn't because you weren't big enough. And who would you tell, I guess? Yeah. There's, I mean, listen, I'm a, I'm a girl. When I was 16, I was raped. And I didn't tell anyone until I got famous. Right. I didn't tell my mum. The only person who knew was my best friend who was on the same holiday as me. And, uh, and it was only because I went back to our little hotel and told her straight after it had happened. But no, I didn't tell a soul because mm. I thought it was my fault. I was culpable. And that's how it is. And that's how the psyche of rape and abuse works. You always feel it's your fault. How old were you when the Benny Hill thing happened? That can't have been much later, can it? Uh, I think I was about 20, 21, because it was mm. after I'd come back from being a dancer in Beirut. And uh, Do you ever I get over it? Do you ever recover from anything like that? Or are you... I think you recover, 
Mm. I think you recover once you talk about it, actually. Right. I think a lot of things... I mean, that's why What's-His-Face, um, you know, a wonderful man in South Africa, um, Nelson Mandela, that's why I think his, his, uh, his idea of reconciliation is a good thing. And not, you know, not that I would want to reconcile with my rapist, for example, but the talking, the talking of something when people mm. have done terrible ills or have had terrible ills done to them, mm. to talk is such an important thing. Mm. And, uh, and it c can clean you, you know. I think you can talk about it too much and then it's like, oh, for God's sakes, I can't mm. talk about this anymore. I feel sickened by it. But, yeah. And also, the life is full of these strange t twists and turns. You know, I just watched a TV program called Tin Star uh, with Tim Roth in it. Mm. And uh, and it was really strange because the twist of the plot was that, you know, th there was a lot of abused and abusers in, in the story. And you have to only to look at history, how, uh, you know, the abused can become an abuser mm. and so on that we have to be really careful and di diligent. But how much strength about... must you have to have walked out his house and not fallen for it? Because that's how these predators succeed, isn't it? By the fear of you not having the strength to say no, and you did and you left. That says a lot about you. Well, yeah, or it says a lot about that he was a horrible old man. <laughs> right. <laughs> with, with, with spitty old breath trying to get him near me. Oh, mm. God, no. And to think they're still playing him in America and think he's hysterical. The irony. Uh, there we go. Hey, listen, I could talk to you for another hour, two hours, three hours. Hey, Sir O'Connor, I'm going to come and see you on tour because I want to do this in person. You're amazing. You're a star. You're classy. And you're on tour. This November from the 16th, you start in Home Firth, then via Glasgow, Gateshead, Sheffield, Salford, Liverpool, Buxton, Bath, Coventry, London, Norwich, Corby and Cardiff, ending uh, in Bury St. Edmunds on the 1st of December and 2nd in Birmingham. What a thrill talking to you. Hazel, thank you so much for your time.